really have to ask you this, Dr. Campbell, all this research, you know, I've been digging into it lately, and it's just, why, why is this information not getting out to the general public? Why are so many people just so clueless when you, you know, you talk about a plant-based diet? <laughs> it's just, uh... Yeah, it is, it's, it's a, a tough, tough question, question. and yeah. actually, uh, I spent about 20 years myself, uh, on uh, national policy and so-called expert panels and other kind of committees in, uh, in Washington and London and elsewhere, uh, I was very much involved in uh, being one of the so-called experts advising on national policy development in area of food and health. And so I have seen firsthand a lot about you know, how science gets translated into public information. Uh, I've also had many other experiences as well, so you know, along these lines, and, and I ask the same question, I do now especially, how is it that we have this information, which is so powerful, so impressive, and, so, and it can save so much in healthcare costs, why is the public doesn't know this? And so I got involved in, in the history of it. I really had quite an interest in history that goes back to the beginning. You know, of, it was first the beginning of cancer research and then later in the, uh, in the area of nutrition research. Right. And uh, that's what, and, and from that experience, uh, I, I do have a lot of ideas. And it's true that the, at the present time, and I've seen this firsthand, these policy communities or committees that make these judgments of what should be the RDA or what should be this or what should be that, these committees are largely uh, deferring to the interests of industry. Yeah. You know, the food and drug industry. Yeah. That's what it is. It's, it, it, it's very clear. It's very much that's exactly what is happening. I've seen how members are added to the committees. You know, and even though these, even though there's efforts made, you know, to keep industry representatives at arm's length on some of these committees, nonetheless, the extent to which the rest of us are influenced by industry interest is still there. Yeah. And so I could, I can make an argument that the reason we don't know this is because you know of conspiracy, because of this, because of that. I can make those kind of arguments because I've seen it. Yeah. Quite frankly, I've tried to avoid that as much as possible sure. because I know that most everyone knows that. And so I was interested in writing the book whole, actually to just try to figure out, you know, how can people be so easily convinced? Right. You know, that uh, this alternative information on animal based food, how can they be so convinced of that when the data doesn't support it? Why has that been going on for so long? Right. And that was the basis for the book whole because I, I believe, and I got excited about it actually, that when you look at the biology of the way nutrition works, that's when I became aware that what we have been doing in research, that includes my lab too, and many others, what we have been doing in research uh, from a sort of intellectual point of view, we've been working with individual nutrients. Yeah. You know, we let that information get if you will, sort of transferred into a marketable product. Sure. And we have, for example, a multi-billion dollar nutrient supplement industry that people really think, you know, is nutrition. It's not. Not at all. It's the pharmacology industry. Or we, we tend to adopt the medical industry we have. The medical industry is premised on the assumption that maybe, you know, when we get diseases, we'll find some kind of chemical, we usually call it a drug, yeah. You know, we find, we'll find a drug that actually can treat the problem. And so it's, it's all this very reductionist research that we do. And it's reductionist research that sells in the marketplace. In fact, that's where, that's where the uh, incentive really begins, is in the marketplace. And, and I, I come back and I sort of look at the, what nutrition really is in a biological sense, from my own work as well as the work of others. And that's not nutrition. Nutrition is the power of nutrition, the impressive ability of these foods to do their thing. That, that ability is attributed to uh, a really remarkable holistic effect 
of almost countless nutrients working together. Absolutely. Yeah, and the, and the combination of nutrients are best obtained uh, when we're eating whole plant-based fruits. It's that simple. So to go back to your question, why haven't we heard this before? I mean, in the last half century or even more than that, we have been prisoners. We have been prisoners of the corporate sector. And, and quite frankly, those people involved in that, also as very good people, not knowing any better, some people are a little more mischievous. But the bottom line for that entire enterprise is to make money. That's our system. Yeah. That's our system. And uh, I, in fact, I, I kind of, quite frankly, kind of back off from uh, my uh, more severe criticism of industry that otherwise I could make. I, I try to, I, I finally end up, I, you know, I, sometimes I think that doesn't get us very far. We can scream and yell and tell about all these horrible things that's happening. Uh, and much of it is true, but uh, at the same time, I think I would like to know what is the larger context within which we live to allow all of us as consumers, you know, as well as marketeers. Yeah. Um, you know, why do we why do we think and think on this thing? Absolutely. And really, it's, this is a fantastic idea, I think, of understanding what biology is—the holistic nature of nutrition. Yeah, and as you would say, um, it's the symphony of all the nutrients working together, not just the individual ones. So getting away from that reductionist and just getting right. into the more holistic idea. And I really right. do agree with that point.